Hello, thank you for the interest for this lecture about endovascular treatment of extracranial vertebral artery stenosis. As we know, 20% of ischemic strokes affect posterior circulation. Causes are similar to anterior circulation strokes. Vertebral artery origins are most commonly affected in Caucasians, but it could also affect uh, distal vertebral artery and basilar arteries. Uh, vertebral artery stenosis uh, may be symptomatic and asymptomatic. Symptoms and signs of vertebral artery stenosis are vertigo, dizziness, drop attacks, ataxia, eye movement disorders, unilateral or bilateral limb weakness, complete visual loss such as cortical blindness and hemianopia. Uh, there are also high rates of early recurrent stroke and 90 day risk of recurrent stroke is 7% in patients with no vertebral artery stenosis, 16% in patients with extracranial vertebral artery stenosis and 33% in patients with intracranial vertebral artery or basilar artery stenosis. What we uh, could uh, see here too, and uh, the independent risk factor for recurrent vertebral basilar stroke is for sure intracranial stenosis, what, you, what is shown here. These are patients uh, with uh, no vertebral artery stenosis, with extracranial stenosis, and survival rate, rate is uh, mostly affected, uh, the lowest uh, in patients with uh, intracranial stenosis, vertebral artery stenosis. What are the treatment options? There are optimal best medical treatment, uh, endovascular treat treatment, which includes angioplasty with or without stenting, and surgical treatment. What are guidelines is uh, telling us about revascularization of vertebral artery stenosis? All patients with uh, recently symptomatic extracranial vertebral artery stenosis should, um, should be recommended for a preventive treatment, which includes antithrombotic treatment, lipid lowering treatment, blood pressure control, and lifestyle optimization. Patients uh, which recurrent vertebral basilar territory symptoms despite best, this best medical treatment and who have uh, 50 to 99 percent uh, extracranial vertebral artery stenosis might be uh, considered for uh, revascularization and re revascularization is uh, we have two, two possibilities that is endovascular stenting and uh, surgery. Uh, and what also what is important that no one should have a diagnosis of positional vertigo attributed to nipping of the vertebral arteries on head movements unless it is clearly uh, confirmed by CT angio, MR angio, or digital subtraction angiography. What is best or optimal medical uh, therapy that is healthy diet, physical activity, and smoking cessation, um, treatment with antiplatelets, uh, low-dose aspirin or clopidogrel, statin therapy, and antihypertensive treatment with blood pressure levels below 140 over 90 and 140 over 85 in diabetic patients. Uh, what do we know about uh, surgical treatment of exocranial symptomatic vertebral artery stenosis? Vertebral arteries in extracranial part are not easy to access. And uh, on the other part, on the other hand, uh, there are insufficient number of experienced surgeons. Uh, surgeons could uh, perform an arterectomy or transposition or bypass of vertebral artery. Early complication rates are between 2.5 and 25%. Perioperative mortality rates is up to 4% and that is 1% for proximal stenosis. Actually, long-term outcomes are excellent with high stroke-free survival rates and patient's rate as high as 90% at 10 years. Most common complications are thrombosis, 
nerve injuries such as vagal nerve or recurrent laryngeal nerve and Horner syndrome and hylothorax. When we are comparing angioplasty to stenting of proximal and distal uh, vertebra vertebral basilar arteries, we could uh, see that the, uh, highest, the highest number of complication rate, peri-interventional peri complications rate are the highest in the patients with uh, angioplasty, and they are having also uh, the highest now, uh, percentage of estimated annual vertebral basilar stroke rate. Uh, patients who are treated uh, with stenting of distal vertebral basilar arteries, they are having uh, most common stroke as a very uh, interventional complication for rate in comparison to other uh, treatments. And uh, mortality is uh, very procedural mortality is lowest in the patients with stenting of the proximal vertebral artery, but they are having the highest uh, risk stenosis rates on follow up. Uh, this meta analysis, uh, which was done by Fang and collaborators, uh, compared um, um, angioplasty with uh, best medical treatment. Um, he, he show, uh, they show, show that the uh, posterior circulation infarct, infarctions are similar at uh, 30 days after procedure. And long-term outcomes also uh, show that higher numbers of uh, posterior circulation infarctions and TNA in patients with best medical treatment. But uh, a statistical uh, analysis uh, didn't uh, show that the angioplasty with uh, best medical treatment is superior to best medical treatment alone. Uh, this systematic uh, review of uh, Steinman, Steinman, which include 27 articles and uh, almost 1,000 patients, found uh, that the risk stenosis rates are higher in patients in uh, whom bare metal stands were used in comparison to patients in whom uh, in which they used drug eluting stands. And restenosis rate with bare metal stents were 30 percent in comparison to 11 percent in patients with drug polluting stents for the extracranial vertebral artery stenosis. When we are looking at the one old trial, Cavatus trial, um, this uh, trial showed that the outcome events after 30 days shown the very procedural TIA and uh, strokes were and myocardial infarction were higher in the patients uh, with endovascular treatment and their conclusion was that the treatment of patients with vertebral artery stenosis should focus on global redu reduction of vascular risk including prevention of carotid arteritary stroke and myocardial infarction uh, when we look forward, uh, then another trial which uh, compared uh, stenting with best medical treatment, uh, they found that the periprocedural vascular complications rate were, was 5% in the stenting room in comparison to 2% in the best medical treatment. And there were also higher percentage of any stroke in symptomatic vertebral artery territory. Uh, another uh, trial was WIST trial, uh, which uh, compared again best medical treatment with uh, angioplasty with stenting, and they found that the stenting in extracranial stenosis appears safe with low complication rate rates, but primary and secondary endpoints, which include um, fatal and non-fatal stroke in any arterial, uh, arterial territory 
a fatal or non fatal stroke or TIA, posterior circulation stroke, or fatal or non fatal stroke within 90 days, and mortality rates didn't show stati statistically significant difference among, uh, among groups. Uh, Another another pool this pool analysis done was by Marcus and collaborators uh, showed uh, that uh, actually the, the analysis didn't show evidence of benefit for stroke prevention treating with um, endovascular treatment uh, for either treatments and these these are the these uh, tables uh, these uh, figures show that uh, this is uh, uh, for the best medical treatment and for the stenting group for all patients and we see here that the um, risk for stroke was higher in patients uh, who were treated for the intracranial uh, vertebral artery stenosis. What also we should know what are the complications of uh, neuroangiography, that is a vasospasm, dissection, excess, uh, excess side hematoma fistula or nerve injury, uh, restenosis and stent fracture. When we are looking for instant restenosis, what are the predictors for instant restenosis, that is diameter of stent and the small diameter most commonly uh, causing restenosis, uh, tortuosity of V1 part of uh, vertebral artery, and diabetes. So in those patients, we could accept, uh, expect uh, instant stenosis. When we are looking for long-term risk of instant restenosis and stent fracture for extracranial vertebral artery stenting, there are high risks for in instant restenosis and stent fracture in patients who were treated with bare metal stents and we, we should avoid that kind of stent but these risk factors classical risk factors for stroke were similar in both uh, groups for the end what we, we could say about extracranial vertebral artery stenosis uh, they should not be stented in a asymptomatic cases or positional vertigo in the cases in which symptoms are not due to posterior circulation, in the cases of tunnel stenosis, extra and intracranial stenosis, in the cases with uh, hypoplastic or tortuous vertebral artery, but it might be considered with caution, and of course, endovascular treatment and surgery might be considered in symptomatic cases in which best medical treatment failed. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope that we will see uh, uh, online and uh, next year I hope face to face on our uh, meetings in Pula and Dublin. Thank you very much again.